Have you ever wondered which part of a speech builds rapport with an audience? Have you ever watched a speaker and you're like, oh man, it's not coming together for them and they're not connecting? Yeah, that's what rapport is. And I'm going to teach you today how and when you build that rapport with your audience. Here we go. So which part does build rapport within a speech with an audience? You know, a lot of people might think it's when you take the stage and you have all these specific things that you do and say, I'm actually going to give you a couple of secrets that you never considered perhaps. It starts before you get on stage. <laughs> I know that sounds different than you were expecting here. We'll actually talk about some techniques as to how to win them over while you're on the stage too, or to build that rapport. But honestly, the truth of the matter is, it starts way before you get on stage. I want you to think about the headshot. Yeah, the headshot. What does your headshot look like as a speaker, as a performer, as an entertainer, as an MC? Your headshot really matters because people see that first, most likely. Whether it's on the brochure, whether it's on the poster outside of the room, or as they walk in and they see you on the big screen. Yeah, your headshot matters. And so work really hard to find somebody good to take a good headshot, be in a good mood. I know I hate getting my headshot taken. I do everything possible not to have to do a new headshot, but you need to get that updated as well. The problem is, is if you look like you were 20 and now you're 40, that's also a problem. So that doesn't help with the rapport and building an audience there as well. And so what I would recommend, get a great headshot. Also, consider your introduction. What's being said about you before you come on the stage? Is it all about all your greatness or is it maybe something that you made a mistake about and that's kind of funny there are different ways to set up an audience to be like oh I already like this person before they're even on the stage another really important thing is your topic what you're speaking about because if your topic is a real serious one but it has a funny angle to it that might open up some more rapport with people rather than just the normal boring talk title I know with my talk title that's a tricky one because I call it your leadership promise and some people think oh I don't like the word promise. <laughs> well, that makes it difficult for me sometimes. I understand that. Other times we set it up to say, your leadership promise. How are you keeping your promise with the people you serve? And people come in thinking, oh, I'm excited to hear what this guy has to say. So, title, headshot, what you uh, are about to take the stage and do, it's important. The other most important one is to have a pre-event call with the client. Yeah, just get on the call with the person who hired you and ask them about their audience. So many people in the audience can tell if you've done your homework or if you're just delivering a canned speech that you've done a million times. They want to know that you did your homework. They can tell really fast. And so those are some cool techniques. Let's talk about now how you can win them over in case there is no rapport built between all those things prior to you taking the stage. Rapport really is just the engagement and connection you feel with the audience and they feel with you. Yeah, you've been at speeches where somebody didn't build rapport and there's a disconnect for a while. I personally like to come out on stage and kind of have things be a little bit questionable. In fact, I had an audience member the other day say to me after I got off stage, after doing a 90 minute speech, I was only supposed to do 60, but the event planner right before I went on said, three of our 10 minute speakers were unable to be here last second. Can you do an extra 30? I said, sure. So I did 90 minutes. I got a standing ovation. The audience loved it. But a guy came up to me and he said, man, I sure wasn't sure about you when you were speaking and you finally won us over. I said, when did I win you over? And he said, took quite a while, man. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. I'm going to teach how to build rapport to an audience online. So that's what I'm talking about today. You see, sometimes the audience just isn't going to be with you. For whatever reason, there was a disconnect with them. Perhaps I was doing some material that didn't connect. And so I would suggest that for myself, I'm now listening to the recording, watching it back, seeing what I did a little bit wrong. That's a real important aspect of building rapport with an audience is knowing what you did incorrectly. But let me tell you some good ways to build rapport quickly. First of all, you could come on stage and you could share a story. You could build rapport by doing something funny. Now you got to be careful there. I think that's what I did wrong. I tried to make a joke about something that I probably shouldn't have and then that created distance with me and the audience, right? So you got to be careful. Maybe it's a joke that you know works or a good anecdote. You could share a couple of quotes or you could ask the audience some questions. Usually I'll come out on stage and I'll say something like, Hey everybody, have you ever been to a concert where the artist didn't play the song you came to hear? Who's one of those artists? And then people start shouting out. Now we are building rapport because they're engaging with me. These are a couple of cool techniques that I like to use as well. One of the best ways I've seen audiences feel rapport with a speaker is when the speaker shares something really authentic or vulnerable.
memorable, pretty much close to the beginning of the speech. It's really interesting to watch because a lot of speakers come out on stage and they kind of look perfect. They like look like they have everything all put together. So people are a little bit hesitant to accept them, but I've seen some really impressive looking people, let's just say, because that's the first thing you see is the way they look. Impressive looking people come out on stage and talk about a big challenge they went through or something extremely relatable that was tough for them. And then we say, oh, that person failed and they're normal like me. As an audience, we start to grab onto that and say, okay, I like this person because they're sharing authentically with me. So consider your authenticity, your stories, your vulnerability. It actually builds rapport quickly with the audience if you're willing to share something like that, as well as has a resolution to getting out of that challenge and it gives the audience a reason to say, oh, that could be me too. One of my favorite examples of this that you could study is Brene Brown. Oh my gosh, I love Brene Brown and I think everybody else does too. If you watch her TED talk or if you watch, she has a talk on Netflix that's so powerful. I'm grateful to learn from Brene because she comes right out on stage and she is vulnerable. She's talking about shame. Yeah, that's a heavy topic, but she does it with comedy. She does it with storytelling. She does it with her Texas accent. You know, she kind of just makes you, draws you in. And I really admire Brene Brown. So study the greats, the people that really connect and build rapport fast. One of my other favorites, Tony Robbins. Yes, he's a staple in the speaking industry, but I'll tell you there's a reason why. Tony Robbins practices building engagement with the audience and rapport with them quickly because he is so energetic. He is so authentic. He's willing to say some really strong stuff. So be ready for that. But I'll tell you, Tony Robbins builds rapport fast. How about knowing your audience? Just standing up there knowing them is a huge connect with your audience as a speaker. So be audience centric, have and create connection. I spent so much time on a recent call with a client and I was excited because I thought, wow, they're giving me a lot of information. They wanted me to talk about their values, their mission statement, examples from the workplace. And they gave me an hour and a half on stage. So I was like, right on, let's do this. And then they said, can we meet again, but in person? And I was like, okay, I never do that, but let's do it. Their business is just a little bit down the road from my house. So I was excited to talk to them. I met the founder. I found out more about them. And it was really cool to be able to build this rapport with the leaders, the event planners, so that I knew more about that audience. I'll tell you what, when I stood on stage, that audience was with me from go. I don't know why, other than I took the time to be audience centric, to care enough about their values, to put that in my speech. Instead of recreating the speech from scratch, what I did is I salt and peppered all throughout my presentation, the values of that company. They were so excited and happy about this presentation. In fact, when I was done, standing ovation, lined up, shaking hands, taking selfies, all the things you want after building rapport with an audience. They sat down and said, how can we help you with your career? We want to introduce you to all of our clients because you took the time to get to know our audience and our company. That's what you want out of every presentation. Let's talk about a couple of other ways to build rapport with the audience. There is this thing called nonverbal communication, which is body language. It could just be the way that you walk onto the stage, the way that you smile, the way that you stand. Maybe you fold your arms and people have said you shouldn't, but there are certain reasons as to why you can, or maybe you put your hands on your hips. There's all kinds of different ways that you can build rapport with the audience through nonverbal communication, dependent upon how you practice your nonverbal skills just by using your body. I can tell you for me, rapport is built quite a bit through humor and levity as well. I love to make things light. I like like to share things that make people laugh and those are always good things right I also like to share within the humor I like to also bring in storytelling storytelling to me is the easiest and quickest way to build rapport with an audience when you think about some of the great storytellers of all time even the people that in your life for people that you say wow I love how she tells that story that's a real important thing if you're not as great at telling stories I want to give you a resource her name is Kelly Swanson go check out Kelly Swanson because she's one of the great storytelling coaches there is in this whole world. Kelly Swanson has made a living as a storyteller who now teaches speakers to become better at telling their story. So when it comes to telling stories, how are you crafting this? How are you putting it together? The main thing to build rapport with an audience with a story is to help them step into the story. Whether it's through the character build or the arc of the story, the journey the person goes through, all of those matter. But think about your audience and why it matters to them. If the audience can answer for themselves, this is just like me, or this is how I 
can do it, or this is why it's important to me. Those are the types of questions we as a speaker want to create for the audience to have in their mind. So they say to themselves, oh, I love this story, that's me, and that builds rapport so fast with the audience when you're in front of them. I just have to say thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that it's been helpful, and here's what I want you to do if you will. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. If you put in the comments some of the ways that you have built rapport with the audience, maybe I didn't share all the ones that you thought I was going to, but I would love for you to put in the comments how you would build rapport with your audience. Thanks for joining me today. Have a great one.